Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. Easter is just a few weeks away and I don't know about you, but I love making a new dress this time of year. Whether you're wearing it to Easter church services, to brunch, or to spend time with family, there's just something so special about a new dress that day. Coincidentally, these looks are also perfect for Mother's Day, weddings, and other springtime events. So I took to Pinterest to find some inspiration, and there are three details that I noticed immediately about the dresses that I loved. Flounces, hem links, and untraditional silhouettes. With this in mind, I pulled some patterns that I thought would be perfect for Easter Sunday or any spring celebration. First, let's take a look at some patterns with flounces. M7894 has some great options, including C and D, that have a delicate little ruffle on the skirt. I also love the bust gathers and the bishop sleeves. The slit might not be totally appropriate for a church setting, but it would really stand out from the crowd of dresses at a brunch or picnic. I have made Butterick 6554 before, and I really love it. I made version C, but I really love B in this instance. That little cape would be darling on Easter Sunday. You'd most likely be carrying a little handbag that day, so you wouldn't have to worry about the flounce getting in the way too much. A is great too, but I'd lengthen the hem to just below the knee. M M7801 is another great option. That neckline flounce of A and B is everything. I'm a little on the fence with the high-low hems because you can always see the underside of the fabric and most of the fabrics that this dress would require don't have beautiful wrong sides. So for that reason, I have to say I love the skirt of B with the bodice of A best. I'd like to give honorable mention to M7745. It's very similar to M7801 that I just showed, but that wrap skirt would not be very friendly if there is any wind at all on Easter Sunday. But I do love the bodices of A and C. So if you can find them both, I'd consider one of these bodices attached to the skirt of B from 7801 or any of the other dresses I've mentioned thus far. If it has a waist seam, you can mix and match them. Next up are some patterns that are midi length. This is the one detail that really sets apart Easter Sunday dresses from wedding guest dresses in my opinion. It's much more demure and modest, which obviously is better suited for a religious holiday. Berta 6343 has two really great options. View A's hemline is perfect for this occasion. View B's bodice gives it a sportier vibe, but if you lower that hemline, you'll dress it up a little bit. And that contrast belt with the bow is a great detail. If you don't have a pattern like M7714 in your stash already, you really need to get one. There are so many options here aside from the four shown, including adding length to the sleeves and hemline. So for this Easter, I would suggest the high neckline, cap sleeve, and a full skirt that hits just below the knee. Who remembers New Look 6526? It's my royal wedding sew-along dress. Looking back, I totally regret not making the midi length. I opted for the skirt of C instead. Here's how my two versions turned out. I made one with each neckline and I really did love them both. So if I made this one for this Easter, I would definitely choose A or B's skirts instead. I'm also very tempted to add the sleeves for my next version. Simplicity 8833 has a classic vibe with its shirt dress details, and with no zippers or darts, you'll be able to sew this one up in a day. I'm on the fence about the sleeves, so I try it on before adding any sleeve to see how it looks with just the drop shoulder. I absolutely love the amount of fullness the skirt has, and the length of A and D is perfect. Simplicity 8594 is actually in my stash and I've been waiting for a reason to make it up. Depending on what you're doing on Easter Sunday, either of the necklines could work. Or consider a layering piece like a cardigan over the dress for the church events and then removing that for everything after. Lower that hemline and you'll have a beautiful garment. Finally, let's consider an untraditional silhouette, the jumpsuit. 
Nowadays, the jumpsuit is giving the maxi dress a run for its money. If the width of the pants is wide enough, you could totally fool people into thinking it's a skirt anyway. So I thought it would be fun to include this trendy silhouette in the conversation about Easter outfits. I could not not include McCall's 7716, but before you write it off immediately because of that back view, let me say that filling that in is super easy. Do not let that deter you. I included it because of that cold shoulder with the ruffle trim. It kind of combines the frill and flounce trim from the start of this video with the jumpsuit silhouette. If you make this one, triple check that bodice length and crotch depth. They both look a little long on the model. I bet you think the sample version of McCall 7608 is a skirt, right? Wrong. Each version of this pattern is a jumpsuit. If the pant is wide enough, no one will know it's pants, I promise. In terms of bodices, I do love the cold shoulder overlay, but I really think that in the right fabric, all of the versions would look stunning on Easter Sunday. And finally, I chose McCall 7909. Now, I know that neckline isn't suitable for every event, but like the backless jumpsuit, it's an easy enough alteration to make. I love all the bodices, but I have to say D is my favorite, and I might even consider adding the ruffles to the pant hem, especially in a solid color fabric. Speaking of fabrics, I have some recommendations for each category. If you're wanting to make one of the flouncy ruffly patterns, you can use any of the rayons or crepes recommended in my Sew Along Fabrics video. There's a link to that video in the description box as well as the top right corner here. I love cotton sateens for the fit and flare category, but if you want your flare to be a little less flary, you could also use cotton shirting or cotton poplin. And for the jumpsuits, go for something with a ton of drape but still hefty like the crepes mentioned in the sew along video. As for fabric prints, don't just think of florals. Going back to the ready-to-wear inspiration, there were springy plaids, solids, and tonal laces mixed in with the floral prints. I hope this has inspired you to make something special for Easter this year. Until next time, bye!